Hi friends, hello, happy Friday. Hi, it's Lisa Hetrick, welcome to Craft Your Joy Live. I'm super excited to be here with you today. I'm seeing everybody pop in. We've got a really fun tutorial today and I'm so grateful you're joining me. Okay, so today I've got a really fun stamp set mashup between two of my sets in the Gina K Designs line. The uh, Beautiful Moments and Woodland Whimsy. Woodland Whimsy is a little bit of an older set. And I'm just kind of excited to kind of bring it back out and do a little mashup today. We're going to do some watercoloring. And I'm going to talk a little bit about pan sets, watercolor pan sets. And I've got two pan sets that I'm going to share with you, two different brands I'm going to share with you today. I had a request from Heidi one of our, um, one of my beautiful followers, and I can see that she's in the chat. I see a bunch of people in the chat. Heidi wanted to know if I could just share a couple, a um, couple pan sets or watercolor sets that were more in the budget friendly range and also like high quality. So that's what we're going to do today. So hello everyone. I see people popping in. Hi Jess. Hi Jesse. Gloria. Heidi. Fonda, first time watching you live. Yay, Mary Ann's here from Pennsylvania. Super excited to see everybody. Okay, we're gonna dive in. Really fun tutorial. There's gonna be a little bit of fussy cutting too, friends. Little bit of fussy cutting. I know that's not always a fan favorite, but hey, we're gonna get into it. And it's also, I'm starting to get ahead of myself, but we're also going to be doing a little mix of transparency with some vellums. So let's go ahead and dive in. I see people popping in. Hi, Sue. Very excited that you're all here with me today. Okay, we're gonna head to the down camera and just do a quick look at the supplies. So also the supplies that I'm using today are listed in the description. I did get that information in the description before I went live. So here are the two stamp sets that I'm using today. Beautiful Moments, dun, dun, dun. <laughs> and um, Woodland Whimsy. This is one of my older sets. This was one of my sets before we started doing dyes with the sets. I'm going to be using this bouquet of flowers and this banner die. And I'm also going to show you how to um, manipulate the stamp so that it can stamp on the die in an arc. So super fun. Okay, and we're using Beautiful Moments. Okay, let's go ahead and do get quickly into the paper. I'm using Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor, friends. I use it pretty much every week. I'm either using cold press or hot press. Today I'm using cold press. I've got some vellum. And I'm also using Gina K Designs Stone, uh, stone Cardstock. <laughs> like blank there on what this was stone cardstock um, in my sample I used one of the powder blues but I changed my mind like literally this morning and decided that I was going to use the stone today because it was calling to me and saying please use me I would like to be in your live anyway okay so here are I have done a little bit of pre-work, as you know, just so that we can keep things moving. So I've got that ready cut watercolor cut with the master layouts die so that I've got my card shape. I got my card base and then I have my stone card. And then I have for the beautiful moments stamp set. I mentioned this last time and I also mentioned this on Excuse me real quick. I'm just going to make a quick turn here. There we go. I mentioned this in the stamp set launch that sometimes your dies that co coordinate with your stamp sets um, are make great shapes, make great standalone shapes. And these two in the Beautiful Moments set do, the vase and the leafery die. So I use the vase and I've cut a piece out in vellum. And I've also cut two pieces of that leafery out um, in the vellum 
and that we're going to use today because we're creating in in keeping with the watercolor effects that we're doing today we're also going to be using some transparent elements on the card okay and let's see what else do i have okay so let's go ahead i'm going to move this out i'm going to be using some ink tense pencils this isn't required but you'll see how i'm going to use them and we're going to dive in here are my inks that i'm going to be using i've got the gina k designs ocean mist and i'm also using obsidian so i've already pre-stamped my bouquet of flowers out in obsidian and we're going to do our washi watercolor on that now let's do a quick look at some of the pan sets so <laughs> kathy said my stamps talk to me that's that's funny mine do too my stuff talks to me and says please it's time to use me okay now oh i also have a water bottle and i'm not sure if i'm going to use it but we'll see okay the i want to talk a little bit about watercolor pan sets now watercolor pan sets you've seen me use this set you've seen me use watercolor pan sets on this channel many times over um so with watercolor, you have pans, you have tubes, you have pencils, you have all these kinds of things. But when you're getting started and you're trying to figure out what you might want to invest in, you might look to a pan set because of its um, affordability, because of its portability. Um, and this is one of the sets, this particular brand is one of those brands that I am in love with. Here's why. This, it's the Paul Rubin set, and I have two Paul Rubin sets to share with you. One that's in the 12, and like this one is 36. So these pan sets are very um, easy to work with and can be a super affordable way to kind of get started in watercolor. But what I really like about this brand is that it is... A really super high quality paint at what I would call a really affordable budget friendly price now I have a lot of watercolor and I have a lot of brands almost like way too many right if you've taken my watercolor wonderland class in my classroom at crafterjoy.com and many of you I see many of you in the chat that have I went through like every possible brand that was out there in that class you don't need all of that. You don't. Um, I do this professionally and I paint professionally, so I have a lot of variety of paints. This set from Paul Rubens is really, really super nice. And we're going to use it today because it's really high quality and the, the um, pigments are very, very vibrant. So here's that set of 12. And you can see that most of the pigments in this set are only one or a single pigment. So they're super clean and clear, like these two right here. That's a burnt sienna, and that is a, um, uh, I need to take my glasses off, a Payne's Gray. Uh, they're, they're always a mix of like two, sometimes three colors. So super, super affordable. This set, um, I just love this set. And yeah, the 12-piece set, I put some links down in the description for this set. The 12-piece set seems to be out right now, but if you're waiting for it, wait for it. They do have the 24. It's just super, super affordable. Now, in that vein with budget-friendly, super affordable watercolor sets, like this is the only set you will ever need. Holy smokes. Let me bounce out the... Um, let me bounce out the... Yeah, sorry, we had some some um, spammers that jumping in on the chat. Unfriendlies. Okay, so this is really, you really only need a small set because you can mix up lots of colors. And for our paper crafting projects, friends, you don't need hundreds of colors. If you want them, get them, but you don't need them. Here's the other brand that I'm like super obsessed with for its affordability and it's high, super, super high quality. And it's called Rosa Gallery. Now, this set comes in full pans. And what I really, really like about this set, A, is full pans. B, 
single pigments, just like the, um, just like the Paul Rubens. Very, very, very vibrant. And they also come in, um, they have a Rosa single pigment set um, in full pans. If you had a set like this, or even a set like this, it's going to last you such a long, long time. Um, hold on, I need to ban those bots again. There we go. Fun. Okay. So... I really, really just wanted to share these with you today because um, if you're getting started and you're trying to figure out like where you want to land with making a purchase, these are two really good affordable options to consider. And know this, friends, please know this. I'm sharing this with you. You do not need all the sets that you see me use. You do not need, you don't even need, you need one set. You do not need all the sets that you see all people on YouTube use. You just need to hone in on a set that's budget friendly and affordable for you and something that you like. So I'm going to just kind of show you a couple of these colors with the Paul Rubens. Since I'm so obsessed with, um, I'm obsessed with this the magenta too like the colors are just so vibrant like right out of the gate let me bring in my towel here just to kind of show you same thing so what I love about it is that it's super super vibrant really affordable cost really affordable price let me get a blue in here we're going to be using these colors today just love it and they mix really well. So if I were to take my my um, magenta here, right, and then drop my ultramarine in, look at that beautiful mix of colors. Look at that. Oh, so super, super affordable, really great high quality. Love it for paper crafting. Love it for our paper crafting projects. And you know what? They come in these really cute tins. So you can use the tins. Like mostly all watercolor sets come with tins. So, um, so they're very, very useful. I'm going to stick that over there because we're going to get going. We're going to dive in. So there are lots of other brands on the market that are, tar that are specific for in our paper crafting world, like specifically targeted towards us in our paper crafting world. Lots of them. They're all fantastic friends. Just if you're, if you're getting started in watercolor, what I always recommend is you know, for your watercolor sets, just get a set that fits your budget and that feels good to you. Spend a little tiny bit more on your paper. For paper crafting, I talk about this paper all the time, the Strathmore Ready Cut Watercolor. Great for our paper crafting projects. We get good results and you'll feel better about your projects because you're going to get better results with better paper. Okay, enough nerding out, right? I nerded out quite a bit there about the pan set. So if you have any questions along the way, don't hesitate to ask. We're going to get started. We've got a lot going on in our card today, in our card project today. It looks like a lot of transparent layers and super fun. So we've got some transparency with the vellum. I'm gonna do a little bit of watercoloring here, some washy watercoloring in the background, and then some watercoloring underneath here in the vase. And I'm gonna do a little bit of techniques between using the Gina K inks for my stamped image and then blending them out and then adding a little bit of watercolor to it. So let's dive in. Jesse just shared, I have so many sets. Yeah, Jesse, I can relate. All right, we're gonna get started with some washi watercolor. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay down water. I'm actually just, my brush is not as clean as I'd like it to be, but you know what? My water isn't as clean as I'd like it to be, so it's going to be what it is. And I'm just painting in water. So this is wet into wet, 
and I'm just kind of painting water in here and out here. I'm just going to let it bleed. I'm not so worried about what's going on out here or what will happen out here because we're going to fussy cut this out once it dries. So we're going to be doing some techniques, a couple techniques today. So this is wet into wet. And then we're going to be doing a glazing technique, which is once this is dry, I'm going to add another layer of color on top to jack up that luminosity. If you've been around my channel for a while, and many of you have, you've heard me do this technique before. But I think it's always fun. This is how we practice. So I'm going to start in with some of the green. Now, in this set, we're going to do a little color mixing. In this set, I've got a green that's kind of not like a botanical green. This is PG7, so this is a phthalo green. I'm going to mix it with a little bit of this um, yellow ochre to get more of a color that's closer to a green that's for botanicals. So I'm going to take a little bit of that color. I'm going to put it right down here on my mat. Let's do a little bit of color mixing. Okay, so I've dropped that in. Now I'm going to take a little bit of my yellow ochre. I kind of mix that up. And so now I'm going to show you. So we've got a little bit more of a green that I can even, it's a little more of a yellow green, which is more of the botanical light green that I'm looking for. So here was the phthalo. See that green? It's very, 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 it's a beautiful green, but not typical of what you would see in nature. So that's what's really nice about the set is that there's all the colors that you need to kind of mix up a green that you might like. I'm going to add a little bit more yellow ochre to that. Let's move my water in a place that's not so gross. Okay. And then I'm just going to go in and just start. I've got a lot of paint on here, a lot of paint. So my brush is wet. My paper's wet. I got a lot of pigment here. I'm just dropping it in and it's going to blend and it's just going to go where the water goes friends and it's going to look like a hot mess but that's okay i'm just dropping it in in a washy washy way and just kind of letting it be okay now i'm going to grab a little bit of my magenta actually this isn't magenta it's permanent rose. It's a rose red or permanent rose. It's very pretty. I love it. It's probably one of my favorite colors across all brands. And I'm going to drop this in and just kind of let it move and do its thing. Now, you can see that it's spidering out. This particular brand with Paul Rubens, when it hits the water, it whoosh, it whooshes out. And I love that about this brand. So that's why it's a really great watercolor set for our washi watercolor effects that I like to do. I'm letting this be messy. Now, when you're doing this technique, it's it can be hard because we have to resist the urge to try to stay in the lines. And I'm not staying in the lines at all because we are doing our washi technique. I need to check my paper to make sure it's not dried. Dried out a little bit. It did dry out a little bit. Let's go ahead and just kind of add a little bit of water back in. I was talking and chatting and my paper was starting to dry. I'm just adding a little bit and then I'm just gonna kind of like coax it out. And this little technique with the brush that I'm doing. I call it brush dancing. I'm just dancing the brush around the paper and just the tip of the brush around the paper. I'm going to let that be. Okay. Now I'm going to come up. I'm going to do, I've got ultramarine here and I'm going to bring this ultramarine in. Ultramarine, ultramarine is a color across all brands, most brands, that's a granulating color. So it's gorgeous when it dries. 
you see some of the pigments kind of coming out. I'm going to add a little bit of water here because it got a little wet. It got a little dry because I was chatting. And then I'm just going to drop some of this color in and just kind of let it do its thing. Okay, and see how I'm just letting it go with the flow. This can feel uh, this can feel a little challenging, just kind of letting things be and letting the water go where you let, letting the pigment go where the water goes. But I promise you, it's just such a it's such an easygoing technique that it just gives you a lot of push watercolor bang for your buck. Now, this looks beautiful. It's it's but it's still wet so I'm gonna take my heat tool and I'm gonna dry it and we're gonna see how much it's gonna shift now let's see it it's going where the water is going so I'm gonna let that kind of go off the edge a little bit and I'm again I'm not worried about what's happening around the edges because I am gonna be fussy cutting that out so let's go ahead and hit it with the dryer real quick and dry it So that I can show you how the watercolor shifts back. So I'm drying some of these outer edges. So the watercolor is dry. My flowers are dry, but you can see how much that color went from that super like chroma vibrancy to shifting back quite a bit. And that happens with every watercolor brand, any watercolor brand that you're going to use. Um, it will shift back once it's dry. So this is my first layer of color. Okay, it's pretty dry. We're going to do another layer. I'm going to come in, and this time I'm not going to be super washing. My paper is dry. My brush is going to be wet <laughs> when I'm done noodling with it. My brush is wet. And I am going to start layering in some color. So I'm just going to take off some of that heavy wetness I got. I'm going to start layering in some color and kind of getting quite a bit of the pigment on the tip here. I'm going to turn this to the side because I'm a lefty and look at what I've done. I've got my pools of color here right where my hand might go. So let's go ahead and turn this to the side and I'm just going to drop in some of this pigment here it's wet, the paper is dry, and I'm just adding it. Then I'm going to clean off my brush so it's very dry. And then I'm just going to just kind of touch the edges a little bit and draw it out to the outer edge. Just draw it out just a smidge. And I'm going to leave it. So what I'm doing is just kind of softening that edge. with a dry brush here, relatively dry brush, softening that edge, but also kind of pulling out some of that color just a little bit. And I'm just, just t gently touching it. And I'm going to let that be. I'm going to let that be and let that dry. That looks a little wonky. Let's go ahead in here and just kind of let that be. Okay. Now, while that's a little bit wet in that center area, Ooh, I got some green in my yellow here. I'm going to drop in just a smidge of yellow right there and let that kind of just become friends. Let those two colors have a little chat, maybe some lunch together and become friends. So as I bring this closer to you and you can see, we've got that layer underneath that is showing through and then I've got this layer on top. That's kind of messy, but it's giving me a little bit more di um, dimension. Now I'm going to go over here and move to my orange one because this one faded back. The orange and the ultramarine faded back the most, right? Faded back quite a bit because they were super washy when I started to paint with them. Okay, I'm going to come in with a little bit of this orange. 
This is cat. This is cadmium red light. Every brand has a different name for the pigments. <laughs> um, so, you know, don't get too hung up on the, the names of the colors. So I'm going to go ahead in and I'm just going to do that same thing. I'm just dropping in my brush is wet. My paper is dry. So wet into dry and I've added a little bit of that color right there. Now friends, these are my, these techniques that I'm teaching you for watercolor are my easy going techniques. I feel like watercolor is super accessible to everyone. I feel like everything like that we do in paper crafting should be super accessible. So, but sometimes watercolor feels like it needs to be demystified a little bit. And I'm telling you, it's just a fun medium to play with. Super fun. So a little bit of that glazing right there, that layering of color really helped kind of create a little bit more dimension there. Loving it. All right, going to turn, maybe not. Now we're going to work on this ultramarine flower. Let me get a little bit more. I've got quite the ratio here. I've done water ratios before. I've talked about this before. Um, so I've got a pretty wet brush. I'm going to dab that off a little bit. I've got a lot of pigment on my brush here. And I'm going to come in. And again, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm adding a little bit. I'm adding that color to the center. Now, and to the petals, just to the center and to the outer petals. Now, I could have watercolored each petal and did some no line watercoloring with this, but I didn't want to do that today. I feel like sometimes the, you know, spending a time doing that is really great. I love it, good practice, but I really do enjoy my washi watercolor techniques because you get really beautiful results, but a little bit quicker. So that's why I'm digging it. Okay. So let's come in here a little bit. I've got a little bit of green going on in that petal and I'm kind of liking it because I had that yellow. So I'm just making sure my brush is clean and I'm just moving the color out to the outer edge, just a smidge. Got a little bit of white going on out there, but that's all right. I'm going to let that kind of go out a little bit. Oh, I'm digging this. I am loving it. Okay, I'm going to leave this layer right now. We're going to leave this, let this dry a little bit, and then I'm going to come back and do a little bit of ink tents. But before we do any of that, we're going to come in and start working. I'm going to have to clean this up because I know my hand's going to go right in it. So let's just go ahead and tidy this up while I'm here. Okay. We're going to come in, put my brush over here, and start working on the base layer of the card and start doing a little bit of the washi water coloring around the vase. And then we'll start doing some layers. So I'm going to go ahead and grab my vase stamp. And because the botanical, I've got my vase stamp and I also have the water. So in this stamp set, I've got two solid stamps that can be used to layer water in the vase. Kind of fun. I'm going to go ahead and ink this up. This stamp is going to go off the edge a little bit. And that's because of the height of the flower. So you can see I've got a lot of height in this flower and I want it to kind of go into the vase, but the bottom of the vase is gonna get cut off a little bit, but that's okay. I think that adds a lot of visual design um, to the project. So let's go ahead, let's dive in. I've got some obsidian. I'm gonna go ahead and ink this up. Now I'm using obsidian because it's an amalgam ink and it's not going to bleed with the watercolor and it's going to allow me to do the washy watercolor on the outside of it and on the inside of it and it's not going to bleed. You could use any color you want. I'm going to use the obsidian 
And also because I'm covering, I'm going to be covering the vase with vellum to get that glass look. You're going to, it's going to be less shocking of a, of a, of a darkness. So I'm just going to go ahead, kind of eyeball this a little bit and just stamp this down. And this base is, is the 100% cotton watercolor paper. I'm going to go ahead and clean that stamp off real quick, you know, in that way that I should have cleaned it off a little bit better, but you know. And now I'm going to come in, we're going to do our first little round of washi watercolor. I've got my water stamp for the vase and I've got ocean mist. And the reason why I picked this blue is because it's like a step up from sea glass. Sea glass is really beautiful blue. Love it. But I, I didn't want it to be super um, light. I need it to be a little bit darker so that when I put the vellum over top, I'm going to be able to see that hints of that blue underneath. So that's why I picked it. So I'm going to go ahead and take this ink, ink it up, and then I'm going to eyeball and line it up that blue. Okay. Now I want to come in and my water is not super clean. So let's go over here and grab this water. And while this is wet, friends, I'm going to go in the ocean mist here and um, I'm going to go ahead into with the ocean mist and I'm just going to kind of blend that out a little bit, get some water going and blend out that ocean mist. But I'm also adding in some water here because I want to go in with my watercolor and drop that in. Heidi just asked a question about using VersaFine. Yes, Heidi, absolutely. You could use um, VersaFine ink for watercolor. You just have to make sure it's heat set. Um, so I tend to use the amalgams because I don't, it's just the extra step of doing the heating that I don't do. But I do love the VersaFine ink because it is a beautiful, it's, it's a dark, it's a dark, dark ink. So I'm going to take a little bit of this pink, um, violet and drop that in. Just kind of let that do its thing. Now I'm doing all this like watercoloring and letting it mix and mash up with the ocean mist. I'm just dropping in some watercolor and letting it mash up with the ocean mist. Now look at that. Look at that vase. Love, just love that. And when we put this trans, you got a lot of transparency here. When I put this over it, you know, not as much of it's gonna show. I don't wanna lay it on there yet, but it's gonna give us that illusion that water is in the bottom of that jar. Okay. Now, friends, I am going to clean up my water here a little bit. I'm going to pour a little bit of clean water into this jar before I get started on the next thing. Just kind of making sure my brush is clean. Now, I am going to paint in water right up to the edge of this vase. And this is fun. We're just going to paint water all over this cardstock and just go around this vase because we're creating our washi, the foundation for our washi watercolor background. We're going to do a couple little techniques here too. So again, another washi wet into wet, washi washi technique. And this time I'm going to do a mix of the ultramarine. I'm going to lay down some ultramarine here. Now, if I started to put it into my water straight from the pan, it's going to be pretty intense, which is fine. But I want to just kind of put a middle step in here. Put those two colors down on my mat here. Get my brush cleaned off. Grab a little bit of 
of the um, ultramarine and just start dropping it in and letting it do its thing. I find this technique so freeing. Just so freeing and so fun. My friend Jessica is here in the chat. Friends, Jessica is an amazing watercolor artist. Oh, her stuff is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. You have to look her up. Jessica Sanders. Color Me Creative. Art.com. Or Color Me Creative. Look up Jessica Sanders Color Me Creative. Okay, this is pretty wet and kind of washy. Now, I want to just, um, I'm going to go in with a little bit of the purple and drop in some of the purple. Okay. Just drop in some of the purple here and just kind of let this all co-mingle and be friends. Catherine just said, sometimes you will do a tutorial or on different brush strokes when you use the tip. <laughs> Catherine, I'm getting ready to do that technique. So hang loose, okay? Hang loose because we're going to do that technique with the brush tip. Okay. Now I'm taking a little bit of my paper towel here. And I'm brushing. I'm just kind of dabbing off some of these edges. And what that does is it gives me a nice, like, organic kind of billowy, cloudy kind of look. Um, and I'm digging it. Now, I'm going to heat, I'm just going to dry this. It's going to shift back in a big way, but that's okay. Let's get it, let's hit it with the heat tool and just dry it off real quick. La, 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 la. Ooh, it's super wet. And also... Pretty. I love these colors. I absolutely love these colors. Okay, so take a look at it. It's dry, but it's shift back a bit. Now, these two colors, that um, ultramarine and the uh, permanent violet, or it's called, or violet, it's called a lot of different things. Both have like granulating pigments in it. I'm going to bring this up as close as I can get to the camera for you to take a look. Do you see how the pigments have kind of separated and you get a little bit more texture and dimension there? Love it! Juicy! Super juicy. Okay. Now, I got a little excited. Now, friends, Catherine just asked about this and it's funny because we're going to do this technique. We're going to do a little bit of painting. We're mixing our painting skills I'm going to teach you a brush stroke skill and you've got some stamping skills going on here. So we got a bunch of different things that we're going to do here. I'm going to take some of my violet, get a little bit more down on to my mat and move that out of the way. Now, one of the transparent, we've got our two pieces of leafery cut out in the vellum. When I lay them in, we're going to lay one in this way. We're going to flip the other opposite direction and going to lay it in this way. So we get them going in two different directions. And I really like it. I like the way it looks. But here's what I want to do. It's a beautiful layer of vellum and you can see what's going on underneath. But I want to add some leafery underneath it. And I don't want to stamp the leafery. I could easily stamp this leaf piece in, but I don't want the stem. So I'm going to teach you how to do the brush stroke underneath this so we get that look of the color underneath it without stamping it in. Let's do it. Okay. Now, let's pull in. Let me pull in a little uh, before we go ahead and do this. That brush stroke technique, this is drying really nicely, is also what I teach to make leaves, leafery. So we're focused on the tip. I've got a lot of pigment, a lot of violet pigment. My brush is wet, I've got a lot of paint. I've got, I'm gonna take the, the um, 
brush. I'm kind of choked up on the brush. This is the ferrule of the brush. I'm choked up pretty close, meaning I'm just up here. I'm going to hold it completely vertically and the tip, just let the tip touch the paper. Then I'm going to take the entire belly of the brush. My hand was in the way. Let's do that again. Hold it. Push down on the tip of the brush and then lift up and I get that leaf, that leafery look. So this, I'll turn it sideways and try to do it sideways for you. So tip of the brush, push down. So you've got the whole belly of the brush, then lift up. Fun! And that's what we're going to do. So if you, if you take a look at my leafery here. My leafery kind of looks like that brush stroke, doesn't it? So this is going to be great underneath it. So I'm just going to eyeball this and just do this in out in this direction. Totally going to eyeball it and I'm going to do this a couple times. And just kind of pump this out a couple times. It's pretty bright. A little brighter than I'd like it to be. But that's okay because we've got this layer that's going to layer over top of it. If I want to, if I want to kind of come back a little bit and not have it be um, so intense, I'm just going to hit it with a little bit of water and let it be a little more washy and let that dry that way. Take a little bit of the paper towel, kind of wash, and just dab off a little bit of the paint. And just kind of keep it that way. Okay. Now we're going to do the same thing out on this side. Now I know that that piece is going to kind of lay this way ish. All right. So I'm out here a little bit. This time I'm going to do the same technique, but a little bit watering down my pigment a little bit so that it's a little less intense. So I'm going to come out. I'm just doing my leafery here. And this one's definitely a little bit more washy because I've got some water on the cardstock. I'm just going to hit that a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to dry it. So we've got this illusion of a layer of leafery underneath. I'm going to dry it real quick with the heat tool. I'm going to dry it straight up and down. I'm going to move around a little bit. Okay. Here we go. Digging it. Liking it. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. This definitely got a little washier than I'd like it to be, but that's okay. All right, I'm going to let this dry. We're going to come back to this piece. And I'm kind of liking all of my layers here. I'm going to only do one thing, maybe two, with the ink tents. You could stop right here. Let me just clean this up a little bit. Um, Heidi just said, if you're not comfortable doing this, can you paint directly on the vellum? Okay, good question. You can't paint on the vellum, it's not going to stick because it's very, very um, shiny and it's just that not that kind of paper. You could use your ink tents on the vellum because it will work on this surface. So, or, or Heidi, you could stamp this in the background, but just like mask off the stem or don't stamp the stem. So just ink up the top part. Hopefully that helps. Okay, I've got bright blue ink tents. I'm going to come in here and I'm holding my pencil out pretty far and I'm just getting a little, little bit of a layer of this ink tents right over top of the watercolor. And the reason why I'm using this bright blue is because I know it's gorgeous. It's like a phthalo blue. And it's just, I'm going to just lightly touch it with water and you're going to see it, it just kind of explode in its intensity. 
and I kind of just wanted that blue flower to kind of pop a little more than the others. It's got that, um, you definitely don't have to do that, this part of the technique, but see how it's popping a little bit more than the others. I'm going to do the same thing for the orange. Just because I want a little bit of pop right here, just a smidge. This one's going to be a little less poppy. A little less poppy. I was going to go in and add a little bit more to the green, but I'm not going to because I kind of like it the way it looks. Okay. And I'm going to leave that be the way it is. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut this out because I need this layer so that I can start to build my layers here and know exactly where I want to put things. So I'm using this piece as my um, my grounding layer, so to speak. So I'm going to go ahead and cut, fussy cut this out. If you don't like to fussy cut, you can see I move the paper. I know that I've had this conversation with everyone on these lives before about how I I'm a left-hander and how I learned how to um, be ambidextrous and use my scissors with my right hand. But anyway, you can see that I am cutting this out, but I am not moving the scissors per se as much as I'm moving the paper and going around the pieces going around the blooms and the leafery by moving the paper as I cut. I have found this to be very, very, let's cut off a big wad of that, um, meditative. And I do like to fussy cut things. So most of the stamps in my Gina K line have coordinating dies. Or you could also use your digital die cutters. I know some people in the chat have scan and cuts or silhouettes or things like that. If you know you want to um, do it that way. Now I'm going to come across here and just kind of get that angle. But I am going to go up here. Then come across, come down, come up into that V and then come up here just so I can really kind of isolate this. I could cut those little um, negative spaces out right there, but I'm not gonna. We're just gonna leave it. Okay, now I want to take and you can see how I needed this piece for positioning also so that I don't get off the top of my, um, my piece of cardstock here. So I need to put this piece down sort of, but not glue it yet so I can get my angles for these pieces, which is kind of working out. I'm going to take a little bit of glue. I've got some Gina K glue. Let's make sure we're good and active. This glue, I like using this glue on vellum because it dries clear and you can't see it. At first it looks a little boogery but eventually it dries clear and you can't see it. So I'm going to put this in here and lay this vellum piece. I've only got a little bit of glue on the bottom parts of the vellum and I'm letting this kind of be shaggy and letting it kind of lift up a little bit. Let that dry there. Now I'm going to take this piece and flip it because I want it to go in that opposite direction. I'm going to bring it down a little bit into my vase and add a little bit of glue to here and just kind of come down, come across, hold it, bring it down a little bit and let it kind of do its thing over top of those little leafery pieces that we have. So see how the leafery in the violet underneath just adds a little bit of extra pop and helps you to be able to see the transparent vellum, which is fun. Okay. Now I've got this baby. 
we're going to pop her like right on top here a little bit and just let her kind of sit up. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue and I'm only like focused on, that's a lot of glue, putting the glue in this bottom portion, a little bit up top here, just a smidge. You could pop it up with some um, foam if you wanted to. I am just getting it as close to that there. There we go. Oh, I love that. Now you could be done. You could leave this and let this be. But I want to give this vase that illusion of the glass look. Now, oh, look at that. Mixing those watercolors with that ocean mist. Look at that color it made. Love it. So I'm going to take this vase that we cut out and we've got that illusion of glass. So we see how it, it really does fade back that, um, that blue underneath, but that's okay. I'm going to go ahead with my glue and just put a little, that's why I like this, um, this applicator because you can get a really tiny little bead of glue out of this applicator. I just realized I'm doing all this on this card base. I probably should have attached it to the paper first, but I didn't. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and lay this down and just kind of put my fingers on it for a minute just to kind of get a bit a quick adhere. Digging it. Love it. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. So pretty. I think this card's going to turn out better than my sample. Probably. Okay. Now I've got a little bit of extra vellum here. Just going to go ahead and trim that off. Now there was something I wanted to show you about the vellum. Um, I might have not have brought it over here. But there was something I wanted to show. If I can find it, I'll show it. I probably um, lost track of it, but anyway. Okay, so loving this. Digging the way this looks. I've got these transparent layers. You can see this layer kind of popping up back behind there. I'm going to go ahead and adhere this. Let me just make sure that's sticking down. I'm going to go ahead and adhere this to the stone cardstock. Then we're going to do the sentiment. I'm going to show you my trick for doing that sentiment on a, an arc. Let's just get a little bit of glue on there. That was a little bit too much glue, but what it is. All right. I like using the glue because it gives me a minute. This glue is really good too for use when you're using the watercolor paper. So I'm going to go ahead and put my hand down here. Just kind of let it adhere. Did it smoosh? Did it turn a little bit? It turned a little bit. That's okay. Okay. Oh my goodness. I am loving it. Okay. Now, <laughs> Kathy just said, I like the way the structured leaves look against the washi leafery. Yes. See, it just added that extra little bit of like illusion behind the vellum. It just adds a little extra pop. Now we're going to pop it out a little bit more. I've got my bright blue ink tense pencil and I have a clean brush and I'm just going to flick on some of this bright blue ink tense and splatter it out. Splatter it out and just add a little splatter. Gloria just said, shared, you have shown us so much today. Yes, my techniques today kind of went, we have a lot more techniques than usual, just because we're doing washi watercolor. We're doing some washi watercolor. All right, now, I've got, we've got our sentiment that we want to put on here. I want to use that be gentle with yourself sentiment. Now, my 
we're still in we're still in January. So as far as I'm concerned, we're still easing into 2023. I am at least. I'm going to grab this banner and we're going to stamp this down. So as we're easing into 2023, you've heard me say this a couple times, encouraging us as a collective group of people to be gentle with ourselves, right? So I've got ocean mist here. I'm inking up that banner stamp from Woodland Whimsy. I'm just going to stamp it down here on this piece of watercolor. Luckily, I left myself a little space to do it. I'm going to stamp it down on this piece of watercolor. Then I'm going to grab the Be Gentle With Yourself sentiment from the Beautiful Moments set. And I'm going to show you how I get it on that arc. Let me move our card over a little bit. I lay my block on top. Then I take my stamp and I start with the Be Gentle With Yourself. So it's actually not pointed down like I'm going to stamp it it's pointed up so that it's actually reading backwards and I'm going to start my stamp out here and just kind of bend it I need to go out a little further bend it along the arc I need to get my head over this just a smidge the best I can and then kind of stamp that down. Before I stamp it into my arc, I'm going to take a little bit of amalgam and just stamp like one above it just to kind of see if I got that arc. And I did. Holy smokes! Sometimes, sometimes it don't look that good, but sometimes it does. But that's my trick on how to stamp on those arcs. All those banner stamps that you might have in your stash, or any kind of stamp that goes like on an angle and you want to use your sentiment in that banner. Now I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut this out. A lot of the stamps that we have in the Gina K line already have like banner dies that go with. But again, I'm just cutting this right flush to the edge because this is a solid stamp. It makes it pretty easy for me to just cut right to the edge. This one's a little bit wonky because, you know, I drew it. And sometimes things that I draw are a little wonky. But that's okay. I'm going to come in over here. Just kind of snip and go around. Follow the edge. Snip. And then go ahead and trim that out and then we're going to finish off our card with this beautiful sentiment oh, oh, I got a little smidge right there I'm going to trim off okay oh, that's not the card Lisa that's the sample okay we're going to take this and I could just pop it up but everything is already kind of elevated a little bit I'm just going to add a little bit of glue and pop this right here let's bring it down i'm gonna i've got right where the vase starts to go out a little bit from the mouth of the vase i'm just gonna pop it right there put my hand on it for a second and just let it stick i'm digging the way this card came out loving it Loving it. At first I thought I was going to use some embellishments, but I'm going to leave it. I'm loving the way this card came out. Robbie said, so tricky with the bend. I know, but that's that fail-safe technique. Trying to give it a go. Look at all that transparency. You can see our layers. We've got that washy watercolor effect that in the floral that really kind of matches that washy watercolor in the back. I love it. And then we've got that, you can still see that blue coming through that transparent layer, giving us that illusion of glass using those, um, using that vellum. Oh, I love it. 
So here was the sample that I did. And sometimes I like my sample better, but no, this time I love this one. Love it. Oh, friends. Gosh, this was such a fun tutorial. Let me um, head back up to the front camera. Glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. Sue didn't think it needs embellishments either. I don't think so either. With the splatter and the banner, I think we've got it finished. Oh, I really loved sharing this card today. Watercolor is so fun. It feels intimidating. I know it does. But the more you play and the more you try these washi techniques, the more you're going to just have fun and you're going to tap into joy. And that's why I call it Crafter Joy because you're doing, you're pulling all of these things together and you're crafting your own joy as you're um, creating your projects. So, okay, a couple things. Um, I'll be back next Friday for another tutorial, another mashup. I actually have been, some of you have been sharing some of your mashup ideas with me. If you have some, share them with me. Direct message me. Put them in the chat. Sue is here in the chat. She shared one with me on the Facebook page. Sue, I love that idea. I am going to integrate it in to an upcoming mashup. So, um, okay. So, if you're at all interested in knowing when I go live and anything else going on with... Um, with me and things that I share, whether it's new Gina K designs releases, my classroom, classes that are coming, all the things. And please take a look down below in the description and you subscribe to my email list. It is the number one way I know that you're getting the information versus may or may not be seeing it in social media. If you're also, also interested, I do have, um, I do have a free community in my classroom at craftyourjoy.com and I have a free course over there. So you can find all that information down below in the description as well. I'd love to have you in the classroom. I'm sharing a lot there that I don't share in social media. So between my email list and my classroom, um, community, that's where I'm really sharing a lot of things at, along with YouTube. So, okay. Thanks so much, friends, for joining me today. I'm so grateful that you could be with me. It means a great deal to me um, to have you sharing and crafting joy with me today. So I'm sending you into the weekend to craft your joy with some inspiration and some washy, washy watercolor. I'll see you next week, friends, and I hope you have a great weekend. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.